Welcome to the David Lynch Podcast here on Anfield Index. These shows are syndicated episodes of podcasts also available on David's personal YouTube channel and Substack page. To sign up to David's brilliant Substack, please visit davidlynchlfc.substack.com and be sure to follow David on Twitter at davidlynchlfc. So we've got the last one of these pre-season friendlies out in the United States, out of the way now. And what a way to end. Liverpool 3, Manchester United 0. And I've said before that, yes, it is pre-season, but I do think these games have real importance. And I do think it's important for Liverpool to be getting wins and good performances like this together before the new season. Because they've got a new manager in charge. It's so, so important in that situation that you see you know, reasons to give the players confidence, reasons to believe that they should buy into what the manager's doing. And not just the players, obviously, they need to see those encouraging signs. But I also think supporters to know that, you know, this is worth getting on board with. This manager is doing the right things and this is going it's going to work. It's going to succeed. It's going to be as good as it was under Jurgen Klopp, maybe even better. I think what you could say from this tour that Liverpool have been on is that they have had those signs, both supporters and players that, you know, this, the, the plan that this manager has come with is a good plan and it's something that is going to work going forward. I mean, you know, three wins out of three as a, as a basic starter is a really good starting point, isn't it? But six goals scored, just one conceded. And of course, two of those wins as well coming against Premier League opposition and not just Premier League opposition, but top end Premier League opposition. Obviously, Arsenal being up there challenging for the Premier League title the last couple of seasons. And though United are a bit up and down, they have... You know, the, the, the Liverpool's biggest rivals, aren't they? And they still always end up in that sort of top half of the Premier League table and qualify for the Champions League the season before last. So I think to get those wins is, is absolutely massive, really, as a say for what that can do in terms of confidence. And Liverpool have done that in convincing style for the most part and also come away with, with no injuries, no fresh injuries from this tour as well. So everyone looking fit, looking good, playing well. And I just think that is hugely encouraging for Liverpool. I think... Probably one of the best things about that is that we also saw in and amongst it wasn't just about the results. We saw, you know, a style of play really starting to show itself. You know, the way that Arne Slot's side play, we, we were really seeing strong evidence of that. You know, the way that they play through the thirds, the the possession style football, but also, you know, the, I, I think in, sometimes in pre season you can see that the attack can sometimes look a little bit sticky because the players are a bit tired and, and that rhythm isn't quite there. But I think. You know, despite the fact they've been doing double sessions some days, I actually thought you know the attack looked really, really slick at times. Which you know, if this is a pre-season version of the attack, then that is hugely encouraging. And also, all the other fundamentals were there as well. The pressing looked really good at times. You know, that that aggression is still there, which I think you know Liverpool fans may be worried when they heard that Arne Slot is more a possession-based manager, thinking that you know that aggression will go out of the game and they won't get to see that. But I think that that pressing was clearly still there, but also some of those really quick counters as well. So Liverpool look like they've got various ways in which they can hurt teams. And also, you know, I don't know about you, but I really enjoy counter-attacking football at times. I think some of the most thrilling moments under Jurgen Klopp came through that style of football. So really, really good to, to know that they've got that in the locker. Now, of course, these games and the results will be quickly forgotten if Liverpool start the new season and the results aren't right, the performances are poor. Um, it's worth noting that. But I do think... At the moment, all you could hope for from pre-season was some encouragement that Liverpool were going to play well when the real stuff begins. And I think that is what we've seen across this tour. And, and to end it with you know a thumping win over your biggest rivals, well, there's not many better ways to end a tour. And I think on the whole, hugely, hugely encouraged by what we've seen. Now, I'm going to just go deeper into the performance tonight itself. And I think it wasn't absolutely perfect. There are elements that worthy of criticising. Um, I, I think Manchester United had you know, a string of opportunities, maybe particularly in the first half as well. But I think what you would say about that is that a lot of it came from Liverpool's mistakes. It wasn't Manchester United carving them open and getting shots on target really easily or anything like that. It was the case that Liverpool were, were giving the ball away in dangerous areas. And again, I think that has been a little bit of a theme of the tour. I think we do have to sharpen up a little bit around that passing out from the back. It's a lot more intricate than it was under Jurgen Klopp. So the players are, are getting used to that at the moment. Um, it, it, but it is important that they, they sort that out pretty quickly because we've seen over these three games, really, and I think probably more pronounced tonight than in any of the other games, that they can pass themselves into trouble. And I think 
you know, you come to the when the Premier League season starts, you're maybe not going to get away with those because the opposition are going to be sharper. And obviously, I think Arne Slot will be confident that he can do that, that he can, you know, because I think sometimes you look at some of the mistakes he's made, it's been kind of rushing it a little bit rather than, you know, you know, trying to force it a little bit rather than showing patience. That's something I think the players have got to learn a little bit. Obviously, under Jurgen Klopp, it was a little bit more fast-paced. So I think they've got to you know, learn when is the moment to make the little intricate pass um, and, and sort of get a little bit better at that. And actually, I thought it was a really good example, actually, of how they should be doing this and when they pick the right moments. And it involved Gravine Keller stepping up into the middle of the centre-backs and making a sort of three there. Now, the idea behind that is to to you know bait Manchester United's press to bring it onto them. And they, and they did that really successfully in this particular moment. The, the press was baited on and the one player who came out to press basically had to leave Ryan Gravenberg in it. He was previously marked in kind of a 2v1, had to leave him 1v1. So then as soon as the press came on to Liverpool, they worked it to Gravenberg. He had enough time then to just drop of the shoulder. The one player who had stuck around and to try and mark him couldn't commit fully to him because he had other players around him. The little drop of the shoulder worked him even more space. He turned and Liverpool were out. And I thought that was really encouraging signs in terms of that shows that Liverpool are getting it and they, they do get it right they have got it right a lot in this pre-season tour in terms of that playing out from the back but as I say it is something that just maybe needs to sharpen up a little bit because when the you know the moments when they haven't been able to pass it through the thirds and that the press has been a bit better from the opposition they have given it away and been a bit silly in possession at times so I think that was something that we really saw today in the performance that I think needs a little bit of work but as I say you know not the only aspect of the performance loads of other encouraging things a- again I think you know I said about the attack that has been a theme of the tour but also particularly these last two games I thought today again they were just constantly threatening Manchester United you know when they did get through those thirds and they got into forward positions you know they were finding it fairly simple to get there and when they did they looked dangerous every time I mean you know it shows that he scored three goals but I, it, but it was you know there were more opportunities to score than that and there were there were moments where, you know, maybe didn't get a shot off, but they, were, they they got themselves into great situations and the final pass wasn't right. Again, that is something you think will come and improve with the sharpness coming uh, as we get further through this preseason. And you can already see the signs of that happening. But I think the fact that they're creating chances at the rate that they are at the moment already, without that sharpness there, missing so many forwards as well, let's not forget that. Uh, that, that is massive for Liverpool, I think, and a really positive sign that was there in the performance today and as I say I think we will see further improvements on that front going forward there's a few individuals I want to go through now because I think they're noteworthy really from this game and um, I don't want to go through every single player but I think that, that these are kind of they tell the story of the game these players and I think a good starting point actually is the the guy who scored the opening goal Fabio Carvalho it's been an interesting one for him I wrote a piece uh, before this pre-season started saying that you know the the fact that Liverpool have changed to a new manager actually gives him a, a little bit of bigger opportunity to to force his way uh, into the plans for the new season because I think under Jurgen Klopp his his fate was pretty much sealed in terms of there was no place for him in the team um, and he can't he got to say he cannot have done more really can he in terms of over this pre season scored uh, scored goals against Arsenal goal against Manchester United today but also played well in both games and looked really really sharp and dangerous. Um, you know, for a young player there to to come in and you know he's I know there's been players missing, so that's given him opportunities. But he's absolutely taken them and shown this manager what he's all about, and also really that he's kind of a, a fit for Arna Slot's football and looks really good. I still think it's interesting that you know he's still got that huge problem, hasn't he, with competition for places. Now he revealed uh, earlier this week or, or last week, maybe sorry that the Arneslot had said that he very much would use him as a left winger rather than an attacking midfielder. And his problem there is that there's such competition there, isn't there? Obviously, you've got Luis Diaz to come back in. It's Cody Gakpo's preferred position from everything we've seen, uh, particularly when he was at the Euros. He looked so sharp in that position. Diogo Jota can play there. You could even argue that Darwin Nunes can. And also, even if one of those players were to leave, say Luis Diaz, Liverpool are clearly looking at Anthony Gordon, aren't they? So I still really struggled to see uh, where Carvalho fits in in the long term but as I say he couldn't really have done more in pre-season I think the big question now is is that enough to keep him around the squad despite the fact there's such competition in that position he wants to play in or, or the manager wants him to play in it's uh, tough to see that one working out for him but I think 
at the very least, what he's done is made sure that there's going to be an awful lot of suitors for him if he does leave because I think he's looked sharp as attack in this preseason and, and really got his head down and worked hard as well um, uh, to, to really sort of, you know, work himself into that style of play and really pick it up as quickly as anybody has really shown yet. So I think he's done a, a, done himself a massive favour in terms of doing that and, 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 you know, quite how that works out for him in terms of his future we will find out over the next couple of weeks or so. But it's an interesting one. Another really good performance from him tonight. Another one who I thought was a, a standout tonight was Quibbeen Kelleher. I mean, I, I wrote down in my notes here, just wow. And, um, you know, uh, Manchester United weren't carving Liverpool apart, as I said. They were getting a lot of opportunities from Liverpool making mistakes. But when they did, they had Quibbeen Kelleher there to, to bail them out. And some of his saves today, absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, and it's not just his saves as well. He, you know, he's so good in every aspect of the play. I, mean, I touched on it earlier in the video that his ability on the ball to, to step up and be almost a third centre half in possession. He was the extra man in possession for Liverpool constantly that allowed them to play out for the back. And he's so so comfortable with the ball at his feet, isn't he? I mean, Jurgen Klopp called him the the best number two in the Premier League, didn't he? Possibly the best number two in world football. And I guess you know, Arne Slot will maybe be hoping that it stays that way because. You know, for all the talk there is about him being potentially leaving this summer, someone has to actually come in with a bid and it has to be the right amount of money. Liverpool will not be giving him away. So, you know, Arna Slot may be thinking, can I get a little bit lucky here? Can can maybe no clubs come in for him? Maybe, you know, we don't get a bid that we find acceptable. I think he'd absolutely love that because Quivine Keller looks a perfect fit for his style of football and has just been brilliant in this preseason, but particularly, particularly good today. Uh, just wanted to single him out for, for praise, and and as I say, Slot will be having his fingers crossed that no bids come in for for Keller because he's absolutely brilliant. Another one I thought uh, performed well today as well. Just a quick one on him, Mo Salah. Um, you know, there's a few question marks about his sharpness. I think after the Real Betis game, but he's absolutely looks like he's getting there now. I thought he was, you know, he just looked. He looks lightning quick, as quick as he's ever been. He, he looks sharp in in possession, really lively, and his assist was brilliant as well. Uh, got a huge role to play this season, as ever. Probably will end up as Liverpool's top scorer, but he, he really does look sharp. He looks great um, and, and, and really in form and, and confident, which is great uh, coming into the season. Now, a couple of other players I want to talk about. Just want to talk about together, really, Kwanzaa and Canate. And I thought, interesting that Canate seemed to struggle more than most with in possession today. He's not as bad uh, uh, you know, on the ball as maybe some would make out, but he's also... He's not Kwanzaa levels of comfortable in possession. And I think it's interesting. He's not sharp at the moment. So obviously he will get there and, and he needs to work on that. having come back late. But I think I think it's clear now that Kwanzaa is going to start the season alongside Van Dijk in that defence. I think against the, the, the game against Ipswich, it just seems clear to me that Kwanzaa, because he's had that full pre-season, he will start there. And I think if he does that, it's all about can Canate take the jersey off him from that point on. And I think... Quanta plays so well at the moment, played well in this tour. He's much more comfortable on the ball with Canate, and I think the drop-off in terms of what they can do defensively is not very big, really, when you look at Quanta's performances. So that's going to be an interesting battle going forward, and I would have Quanta slightly ahead at the moment on the basis of what he's done in pre-season. So that's an interesting uh, battle for the season ahead. I'm really interested to see how that plays out. And uh, another one I want to talk about is, is Wataro Endo, and I don't think it bodes particularly well for him today again that he wasn't involved from the start I mean the fact that Ryan Gravenberg is thrown in ahead of him into that midfield clear priority is to get minutes in his legs ahead of Endo and also train Ioni is brought on before Endo as well again I think it just shows and feeds into everything I've said on this channel that my understanding is Liverpool absolutely despite rejecting that bid from Marseille they're absolutely happy to sell him and as I said before my understanding is that Endo wants to stay and fight for his place, but I think he, that position may weaken if he starts to see that there the really are no minutes for him in this season going forward, and he's clearly not a priority in that midfield as far as slot's concerned. So I thought today another blow really for him in terms of his chances of sticking around and maybe you know moves Liverpool a little bit closer to signing an alternative holding midfielder in this role. And just the last individual I wanted to talk about is Naomi. Obviously, as mentioned there, he, he came on, and I just think... Again, he looked really, really sharp. He's had real huge involvement in this preseason, which I think shows that the new manager, as much as the old one, really massively rates him. And 
I think he's too slender build-wise to go out on loan. Yeah, I think he'd get eaten up in the championship. But I still think there's probably minutes for him for Liverpool. You know, in the games where they think they're going to be comfortable, where they're going to have a lot of the ball and it's a bit less about physicality, definitely in the Cups. I think there are big minutes ahead for Nione this season. And, he, you know, on the basis of what we've seen in pre-season, he absolutely deserves it. He's a phenomenal talent. Really, really excited to see where that goes. Now, I'm going to leave it there, really, and sort of sum up where we're up to. Arneslot said before the game that he expects the internationals who are remaining now to be back in on Tuesday. So the, the players will fly back immediately after this game. The players who are on tour, they'll have a day off and then they'll be back in training with Tuesday. And it should be the full squad all together. So the likes of Van Dijk, Gakpo, Diaz, Nunes, uh, Joe Gomez, Trent Alexander-Arnold, the McAllister already joined them out on tour, but will be in a, a full part of training there. And then it's on to, of course, then the, the final friendlies, checking out how fit these returning internationals are, which ones are those you can squeeze into the team against Ipswich. And also, hopefully in those final friendlies, an even better idea of what Arna Slot's best team is going to look like. You know, there's so many star players there who are going to surely come into this this 11 that he's been putting together as kind of his strongest 11 on tour. So they're, they're going to have a real influence on how this team plays and how it all works. So really, really... Uh, exciting times and excited to see how that worked but as I say I think we've seen encouraging things from this pre-season tour really really good signs that this is going to be a positive change to Liverpool to this new manager and so as I say I think it's really really exciting do let me know what you think in the comments let me know about what you thought about the performance against Manchester United of course always great to beat them and, and what you thought of the performances across the tour are you excited about how things are going to go under Arna Slot do let me know and as ever if you don't subscribe to the channel, if you can click subscribe, that's always massively helpful. Um, you know, There's so much more to come. There's more friendlies, the transfer updates, because it, we expect it's going to be busy in August and it's really starting to ramp up now. So make sure you don't miss those transfer updates. Do subscribe. And as I say, if you can like the video as well, always massively appreciated. So hopefully I'll be back soon now for another transfer update. Surely over the next week or so, we'll be getting an update on in terms of uh, potential incomings. Let's hope so. Uh, and if we do, I'll be straight back on for that. So hopefully, guys, I'll see you very soon.